Welcome to Mike's on Mike, a conversation about politics, government, and Jacksonville. Join 50-year opinion leaders Mike Hightower, Mike Tolbert, an award-winning broadcaster and longtime political observer, Mike Miller. Hello once again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mike's on Mike. We're happy to have you with us. And once again, of course, our podcast is brought to you by the fine folks over at the Jacksonville History Center, which incorporates the Jacksonville Historical Society run by the great Alan Bliss and his staff. We thank them for their continued support of the Mike's on Mike podcast. And thank you for joining us. It's going to be kind of an interesting week this week. It's just the three of us, just the Mike's. And we're going to be talking about what we have done over the past year, if you will, and 2023, and also take a look ahead about what he planned for 2024. Once again, Mike Miller, Mike Hightower, Mike Tolbert, we are all here with you. And guys, here we go once again. Good to have you with us. And uh, happy holidays to both of you, by the way. Happy holidays to you. you. Thank you very, very much. It's good to have Mr. Tolbert with us. Let's talk about how this whole thing got started. Uh, I, I think that's you. You think that's me? That's you. Well, I, I can tell you that. Go ahead. That you, you're the one who proposed that we get together and do this, uh, Mike, Mike Miller. So I'm yeah. the one to blame. And, and, and Hightower, <laughs> Hightower seemed to buy in hook, line, and sinker. Uh, <laughs> and I was kind of apprehensive. Why were you apprehensive? I never knew that. Because uh, it was Hightower involved. <laughs> oh, I got you. <laughs> No. All right, that'll do it. It's been great having you with us. Happy. Oh, I'm, no, I, I'm uh, contrary to common knowledge. I, I don't like new things. You know, I'm a, I'm a let's keep it like it is kind of a guy. <laughs> Mike is our real curmudgeon on the show. He really is. Eh? <laughs> Actually, though, you know, if we look back, it's hard to believe this is our 22nd episode. Uh, it of this thing. just doesn't we, seem we possible. Had, we had no idea that we would even get along. Uh, we had no idea. Well, we knew you were very articulate because of your radio experience. Right. But, but we had no idea that either one of us would communicate in this kind of a venue. And we have validated that we're not. <laughs> <laughs> and, I think the amateurish quality of the three of us comes across very well, don't you? you and it's you know, kind of endearing. I will remind you that I think it was you, Miller, who said, what are our goals? Or maybe yeah. you will. Somebody said, who or what are our goals? And my goal was simple, just have fun. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. I met my goal. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I think it's really important is that uh, we did this. We, we, there was no rehearsal. <laughs> there was never, ever, but we have never, the three of us ever until the first episode ever sat down together. No. I mean, talk about crapshoot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, but I have to say to Mike Colbert's, uh, aspirational goal we it has been fun i mean you know we're and you know yeah. i'm not even sure how the idea came to me uh, if it was a bad dream something i ate or what it was but sober? um were you sober pr probably okay. not um or straight for that matter but uh, aside from that i i guess i've wanted to be i've wanted to do a podcast for quite a while uh, uh -huh. you know I, I i loved my radio career i mean 35 years of doing radio was just fantastic. Uh, and I got away from it when I got into government, of course. Uh -huh. And then I, I wanted to find a way to at least find a way to continue doing what I did before, which right. is talk to the community. And um, God knows there, there wasn't a radio station in this city that would be dumb enough to hire me again, not at this ripe old age and nobody is doing local talk. And that was the most important yeah. thing to me. Yeah. Aside from First Coast Connect, on WJCT, and of course, all the sports talk shows. Right. I mean, it's all sports. Nobody was doing issue oriented talk, which is what I do. Yeah. And I said, there's got to be another way to do this. Well, a friend of mine, and I've told you guys this before, and then I'm going to shut up, but a friend of mine in Texas does three podcasts a week. And I'd been in communication back and forth with him and back and forth uh, to find out how is this done? Is it tough? Is it easy? Who does it for you? And all the rest of it. And that's when I said, well, let's see if we can do that. Now, I know well enough that not one person in this audience today would have watched a podcast if I were the only one behind a microphone. So I said, I really need some star power <laughs> to attract an audience. And if we're going to be talking about issues regarding Jacksonville, I need somebody who's got a very deep history in the politics of this city and just the whole history of this city and you two were the first to come to mind. Uh, I, I won't lie to anybody. I, I, I asked Mr. Hightower because he was a Republican 
And I asked Mr. Tolbert because he was a Democrat. And I said, I'm going to do my dangest to try to stay in the middle of this thing and be, as you've referred to me, the ringmaster of the show and not really the perspective, perspective insight or, or observation. Observation insights and perspe uh, Perception. perceptions. Yeah, yes, I yes, don't right. want to do that kind of stuff as much as I want you yeah. guys to do that. So that's really how it came about. And I, I, I'm just so grateful to have you both as friends, first of all, because I think we've gotten much closer over the, over the months now that we've been together. But more importantly, what you guys have been able to contribute to this podcast because of your history and your experience and skills uh, is exceeded what my expectations were when we started out. So well, well, publicly, well, thank you so much, you guys, for being a part of this. Well, first, thank, thanks, Mike. But, you know, as we, as we have shared on the show, Mike and I have known each other 50 years almost? Probably 50 years. 50 wow. years. <laughs> and we have just been great friends with, in, in all those years of working in politics. We've pretty much been on the same side or, or, or most of the time. And... Uh, but we've never done anything like this. And I have to just tell you, uh, he's one of my best friends and we, we love to pick at each other. And this has just turned out fun. And what has been interesting is that I've known Mike at least 50 years, but every time we have one of these shows, he brings a perspective that I didn't understand, that I did, didn't realize. And it is just incredible. It really is. Gosh, and I'm so glad to hear that. Seriously. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I mean, you, you, some of the stories and all that, which I think is what's made this since it's non-rehearsed. Uh, but I, I thought I knew you, but I didn't. And well, you, you know, we, we, when we first started talking about this, too, we were trying to figure out what to do. And I remember <laughs> somebody said, well, why don't we act like we're sitting in a bar in a booth and talking about what's going on in Jacksonville, and and we want the people sitting behind us in the next booth to kind of be hint curious about what we're saying. Yeah, and I don't know we've done that, but we started out, we 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 were just going to be us. I think I think that yeah. was our original yeah, right. intent. It was. Then all of a sudden we started getting guests on, and we have to kind of remind ourselves now to go back and just do us. Just the three of us. Just yeah. the three of us, like kind of like this. But but if you think about it, over the last what, 22 episodes now, some of the guests we've had have been phenomenal. I mean, uh, I can recall uh, Sheriff Glover, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in the two episodes he did, uh, that was so moving. I mean, so insightful and, and so moving. Uh, and you go to the other end, and that's what was Warren Jones recently. Right. Uh, incredible insight and knowledge about the school system and what's going on with education here. And it's just been like that almost week after week. Uh, and the good news is it amazes me. Nobody's turned our invitation down yet. No, no, uh, which is surprising, which may be nobody's watching. Maybe they don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say no to something they don't you know, know about. That's right. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, we've also left money around. And maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of, that kind of. I do have to ask you this one more question, though, regarding sure. the start of this thing. Uh, by the way, when you talked about Mike Tolbert, about the idea of sitting around a bar and having a drink or whatever, I got that idea actually from Showtime's The Circus. Inside yeah. the greatest political show on earth, which is just a phenomenal program right. with three people that do nothing but talk about politics. Unfortunately, and I hope this doesn't happen to us, but Showtime has canceled that show for the next yeah. season, uh, which I'm very disappointed in. I wish they had gone through the election of next year, but be that as it may. But that's really the format that I was looking for is just nothing rehearsed, just talking. Just well, talk. you know, I, found, if we ever I decide... found the perfect dive bar for yeah. us to do that show, but it's in Brooksville. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, I mean, we may talk. We could do that. We, we could do when, that. When my, my television network, and my television carrier, whatever it's called, yeah. uh, canceled CBS or stopped showing CBS. No I, kidding. I couldn't watch the SEC championship game. And there's a dive bar not too far from my house where I go occasionally to have a beer and, and lunch. Huh. And it is a dive bar. Uh -huh. But I recall that they have a huge television screen. So I called in, down and said, uh, are you guys going to be watching the, champ the SEC championship game? Sure we are. I said, okay. So I went down there, uh, with, with, and I was there with a bunch of bikers. <laughs> uh, I sat next to a guy who was a bouncer for an, uh, another dive bar that had been closed. I had a great time. Uh -huh. Ate onion rings and drank beer. and But that, it'd be the perfect place for us to do this show. we got to find one of we got to find someone. To well, do I was just thinking yeah. when you said that, uh, I was just thinking before they, they tore down um, 
your favorite place. You and I used to go and have lunch and talk about politics. Yeah, yeah. River City Brewery. River City yeah, Brewery. Brewery. So, oh, yeah. you know, so I mean, obviously we have experience of that. Yeah. So that all you got to do is find a venue. So exactly. We already have that experience of doing that together. Well, well that's, uh, that is going to be one of our goals for 2024 is to find right. some place to do the show from. That won't throw, know, us, throw us out halfway through. You know, we. One, I think one thing that's helped us is it's not just being the three of us, but, but for instance, when we had Andrew Pantazzi on twice now yeah. uh, to talk about procurement, to talk about the jail deaths and, and that situation, uh, to talk about the state attorney and the lack of uh, any any enforcement or any watching the, the uh, foxes in the hen house at city council and right. procurement. Uh, they Nate, Nate Monroe and Gene Fournette talking about the Super Bowl, I mean, not the Super Bowl, but the stadium Interval. rebuild and the Florida Georgia game. Right. We've had some good people on here who've added so much to, to what we do. Right, and it and when you think of the topics, it's it's sort of every week, every other week, there is something that comes out in Jacksonville that we have a chance to talk about. Oh boy, we- and, and just but to Mike's point, think of the folks that we've that we've heard their perspective, which gave us an opportunity to do some great listening and then ask them some really great questions, which think of the talent or the experience that we've had here. I, that, that's extraordinary. I, I, you know, you were talking about some of the things we remember. I, I think of uh, Mr. Talbert's comment when we had Nat Glover in here and, and he said, you know, have we, are we sure we've got Nat Glover or not? Uh, Kid Rock. I, it was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just you see this side of these personalities in front of this microphone that you didn't see before, and and then just and I mean, to the person, the one thing that I think that jumps out is every one of these folks that come in here and ha- and talk with us, or we have the opportunity to listen. They're authentic. I mean, that's yeah. what's really cool, yeah. and they they give their perspective, but they also just bring some insights that are just invaluable that are really incredible treasures for our community. That, you know, I mean, when you, you think of the, the folks that we've had in here, I, I, some of the stuff that we've, we've heard from them, it's incredible. Well, it's you know, I thought I, I knew, uh, uh, I can't even think of his damn name. <laughs> Warren, Warren folks. Oh, yeah. Man. I thought I knew Warren folks and knew about Warren folks. But when we had Tim Gilmore, the author who wrote the book about, about Warren folks, I found out that I knew about a thimble full next to a gallon. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was just, it, it was an amazing, amazing thing. And it was so, he, his observations and, 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 and reporting on, on Warren folks is so still akin to what's going on today in so many ways. Right. You know, I mean, Warren was one of the very few back then public anti-Semites, racist. Uh, now we've got a lot of them. You know, he's he's got a lot of friends in the streets right now. Yeah, and, and to Mike, to underscore that, I mean, we all kind of knew he was sort of this weirdo that you saw on the street, and it was kind of like, well, there's Warren folks again. To Mike's point, I, I, Think about what we have experienced in our community with the flyovers or the things on the buildings. Just this I, past week on the billboard. And yeah, I mean, I don't know it's about real. That. What was that? There were two incidences of anti-Semitic uh, graffiti that was written. One was on a huge billboard. They blacked it out very quickly. And I'm trying to remember what the second one was oh, or where that was. It was on a building. But uh, two incidences just this week. I just read, as a matter of fact, yesterday, uh, a report that anti-Semitic occurrences between the first of the year and today have gone up by 338% over the same time period of the year ago. That's here? Here Here. in Jacksonville. Oh, my God. God. Ooh, that's horrible. It's scary. It is very, very, very scary. Very, well, you know, I was telling you, both of you, I, I had coffee with our good friend David Miller this mm-hmm, morning, yep. uh, who's gone, by the way, I think is going to be our first guest after the new year. That would be uh, January 5th, ladies and gentlemen, no. by the way. No. It'll, 8th. That, it'll be airing on the 8th. We, we right. record yeah. on the 2nd. On yeah. the 2nd. Yeah. yeah. But anyhow. Sorry, Dave, I'll show you a calendar. David, David, thank you. <laughs> David uh, is, is, David's always on a crusade for the, for the better, uh-huh. for the good. Uh uh, but I, I said I got the no question that that he is really incensed and and very passionate and very committed about the anti-Semitism going on right now and and trying to find ways to 
do something about it. I don't know what you do. I know he's committed to it, but uh, and for us Gentiles, yeah, it's it's hard for us to to internalize what guys like you right. are going through. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just very very difficult to, to us to comprehend that. And and what what and I do when you made the thing about between a gallon and a thimble, you know, having had the opportunity on twice to go to the Holocaust museum in Washington, D.C. Very I mean, impressive. It, 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 and you go through that Incredible. and you the walk shoes, out and you think, and you think, God, that, that can never happen again. And now it is front and center on, on TV every day. And we're watching the whole world go through this. And I, I just went, I can't believe it. I mean, I, <laughs> as you know, being a sitting Methodist over here, <laughs> thinking from from your perspective, Mike, and, and the folks you know within the Jewish community, I, it, it just I can't imagine what what must be going through your head at all times. And uh, I, I will tell you, there are a lot of good people in this town, and we've just got to make sure that these incidents of hate and vile thinking we've we've just got to come together and get rid of it somehow. I mean, that's the one thing when Jacksonville's got to come to. I want to change the subject. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, if you don't mind. Not at all. Not the, not it's your show as much as ours. No, you know, going back to uh, our guest and some of the issues we've covered, uh, one that keeps sticking in my crawl is, is city procurement. And the, the fact that, that city council members who run nonprofits are being given money uh, without going through policy or going through procedures. And then when Mayor Deegan did a stupid thing by giving a no-bid contract to one of her donors, uh, the, the, the the biggest hypocrite on the council stands up and, and yells foul and we're going to put a, we're going to make sure you, you bring all that to us now because we can't trust you and there's no transparency in what you're doing. You and I talked about this, but I don't know if you and I did, Mike Hightower, but uh, Nick Holland, who's the chairman of the finance right. committee, has introduced a bill that says there will be no more. If you're going to do any any kinds of contracts for lobbying or for uh, uh, grants, you must get the permission of the city council before you cho- you choose one. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting, he of all people, <laughs> he's the chairman of the finance uh, finance committee this year. And so he is bringing out legislation, but here, what was it on the night that they approved the, uh, Mayor Deegan's budget? One of the last things they did was he had one of his colleagues introduce legislation that his nonprofit gets $90,000. And of course he recuses himself and it's like what, two o'clock in the morning, nobody knows it. Now, you know, talk about hypocrisy. I, I you know, uh, it's 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 really ridiculous. It really is. Uh, and uh, you know, yeah, I hope that applies to the city council. Maybe they should introduce legislation that if you are a candidate for the city council and you work for a nonprofit, then at some point there should be some restriction that you can't, you know, you can't apply, uh, you can't allow Your money. Can't- tax, you can't have taxpayers' money going to that. I mean. You know, we all know incredible a lot of nonprofits that are in this town. I, you know, I'm part of an organization that now we have 120 young professionals in the community. And the way we do it, half have to be from the uh, for-profit sector and one half have to be from the nonprofit. So when you look at that, if my math's right, there's about, a, you know, about 55 thereabouts who are in the nonprofit who do great work. They've got to go out there and hustle and compete everybody else. But you've got five or six members on the city council that they can sit there using taxpayer money and get their nonprofits anywhere from 90,000 to 300,000 or more. And they don't have to compete. Hmm. I mean, talk about a level playing field. Well, you know, one of the things Not. that one of the things that Andrew Fantasi said when he was here, I think on his second visit, he talked about how when a new city council comes on board, there's always an orientation right. that includes an ethics presentation. Correct. And then he took out his phone and he, he read what the first assistant state attorney told council members about procurement. He said, Los Angeles and New York have procurement issues. 
Jacksonville does not have any. <laughs> and that's the biggest BS I, I ever yeah. heard in my life. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, so, then he, and, then he, and then he said he also, the guy also said that uh, text messages between council members have nothing to do with sun, sunshine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm going, so, so, and I, I got to tell you, this may get us, get me in trouble, but I'm hearing that every once in a while, maybe once every two weeks, and it coincidentally a little bit before the Tuesday council meeting, a certain number of those council members are having lunch at one of them's house. Yes. No that's, that's kidding. That's what I'm hearing, and I'm wow. hearing some credible sources. Wow. So, Melissa, if you're listening, get your ass up and do something. <laughs> Well, and particularly since uh, uh, the city councilman said part of his legislation, I think it's called transparency for taxpayer something. And he is using by something that you and I had the opportunity to be with David Miller was transparency, integrity and accountability. I mean, not only that, then not only is he a hypocrite, but he's plagiarizing what we did with our jacks. Well, we didn't it, have um, ownership of that. It's it called the Transparency for Taxpayers Act. I, well, you know, what's good for uh, Don and Deegan? It's for taxpayers, but not for city council members. That's right. <laughs> Transparency only yeah. for the taxpayers. When, when, you're, when you're city council, the taxpayer's money is just your a ATM, I guess. <laughs> it certainly is. And boy, do they have the PIN number for that one, don't they? God, it's just, I, I, yeah, you know, we're, I keep thinking, going back, Mike, to the years that you and I have been together. Can you imagine the texting or the thing that happened at city council or any of this stuff when Harry Shorstein or Ed Austin was there, I, it wouldn't have happened. Well, I don't think, I don't think we had texting. I think so. we didn't have <laughs> well, texting. Well, so I mean, <laughs> all right, but I mean, yeah, all right. But they didn't get, but they didn't get together in people's houses. No, they either. did not. No, not, not, no, not, they did not. not except at Christmas, maybe for yeah. social occasions, something like, <laughs> but they that. also knew what was going on. They knew on. somebody was watching. Exactly. So they, yeah. They knew somebody and again, not to leave out Angela. I mean, Angela was pretty much a watchdog as well. So, but I, I'm, I'm, re, I'm very concerned that we don't have that. And that's one of the reasons I think this show is, has value to it because we're living in, in, a, in a world now where the, the, the newspaper is diminished and diminished and diminished. And Nate Monroe and Barreline and those folks do the best they can, but they can't cover the waterfront. And there's not, very, there's, uh, there's not much in town that kind of talks about issues and brings things up like we're able to do. Right. And I think that's a part. And I think that's one reason people are, are, are supporting us is because they see that kind of a value, but, but something's got to happen. I mean, uh, we live in a world now where the rules don't matter. It doesn't seem. Well, because there's no account. You know, we keep talking back here of observation, insights, and perception. I think maybe for 2024, we would put it, we should have one that says, Rumor has it that, <laughs> you know, rumor has it that they're having dinner tonight what? or rumor has it is somebody's got, somebody has a bill coming up that might help their nonprofit or rumor uh -huh. has it. I, because of course we don't editorialize. No, we do not. We do not. We, you never get our opinion on the show. <laughs> we do afterwards when we're going out for a glass of wine, but you don't get it on the yeah, show. Exactly. So tell me, what, what, what have you guys learned? over the last 22 episodes that you didn't know when we started. I mean, what, 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 have you learned anything? I, I don't know if I've learned anything, but I've had several things reaffirmed. I, huh. I, this is going to sound hokey and you guys go ahead and do it. But I, I, what I've learned, you guys are two good friends and I appreciate that. I, I, <laughs> it I, must I, be Christmas. I, I, yeah, no, it is. And, and this well, this is in lieu of a bottle yeah. of wine. Well, I mean, <laughs> and it won't be, Talbert's so cheap, he's not going to buy it anyway. No, so I don't know. And if it is, it's it would be, be Boone's a, farm. Well, it's going to be in a box. Or it's purple so cow or But I mean, seriously, I, you know, uh, think of all the years and, you know, we get together periodically and, you know, I think one of the neat things about this is that friendship is important. And the fact is we've, we've got a lot in common and, you know, sometimes you, kind of take that for granted or forget to do it. Well, the good news is we have some things in common, but we don't have a lot of things in common. Yeah. We don't have too much. Yeah. We don't yeah, have too much. Enough. Yeah. And I think that's, that's important, you know, I, but I have had some things reaffirmed. I, I mean, I've always believed that Jacksonville is, has a lot of good people who are trying to do the best they can to make the community better. You're right. And, and you and I have had discussions since at least the mid nineties 
about the current crop of leadership at that time and what's, who's going to fill their shoes when they, when they're gone off the scene. And now we've having that again recently. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and, 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 and the world has changed in Jacksonville, just like every place else. When we were growing up in Jacksonville, a lot of the leadership was homegrown. They came out of the businesses that had, their parents even started. I mean, right. homegrown. Now we're in a in a community that is in such transition all the time that that a lot of the business leaders don't have a lot of roots. Uh, one of the things that David Miller told me today, and I was so glad to hear, as the the, the civic council of all those CEOs looks like it's 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 going through an, another stage where it's going to become proactive as opposed to reactive. Great. And Good. What's that? They, uh, yeah, they they're adding staff. They he says they've created a foundation uh, with their to fund and adding staff to go into several different I think he said 12 different work areas to do stuff and had, and I think that's going to be helpful. That's one of the things I miss most about not having JCCI around anymore. Uh, because they used to do that. They did a quality Quality of life survey every year, and we used to track that with the trends of how it was going. Uh, and and I really miss not doing that. Raymond Day was going to try to revive the JCCI, right. and I don't know whatever happened he, to that. He couldn't. I don't think he could. He as 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 great as his intentions were, I don't think he could get the kind of buy-in he needed at the right places to make it happen. Yeah, you know. And I, and that's too bad. It is too bad. Yeah, but uh, but something like great that, resource. I mean. Uh, and, and again, going back to our friend David, uh, he he brought up uh, my inside source. Mm-hmm. You know, he said that 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 made a difference, and and what you guys are doing here is can be making a difference too. Right. And I hope that's the truth. I hope that's the case. Which is also what Andrew Pantazzi is doing at the Tributary. Absolutely. You know, this is this is the independent voice in the print media these days by having the Tributary, and uh, I I mean I. I, I'm, I'm religiously reading it the moment it comes out and I get it sent to me in my, in my mailbox. But uh, I think that's the kind of tradition Tobert that you had with the inside source where yeah. you weren't controlled by any editors. You weren't controlled by any corporations or in town or out of town. And, and no that's conscience kind of, either. And no con. Well, that's, <laughs> and that does help. <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's and the quality theater. that, that Pantazzi is able to use in, in developing the tributary mm-hmm. and using it. You know, it's interesting when you think of Pantazzi, you think of David Miller, um, Mike, Dr. Mike, Binder, Michael Bender, Bender that was here the other day. One of the things that as we look, um, and you talk about the good work they're doing and, and all that. And some of these people is this new generation that's with all due respect. If you look at us, if you drop down, you drop down probably 50, uh, 20 years. Mm-hmm. That's that generation that we need to encourage and get involved and have them on breath. Let them be here, have more people understand what they're doing. And so that they are a resource. Yep. And uh, like, so people know this, not like us old guys. That are doing that. <laughs> who are going to be the great leaders tomorrow? Well, who knows? You know, is there anybody that's bubbling? I think David is certainly one of yeah, those. And of course, have to be part of that. There. there are a lot of them. I mean, they're there. Uh, I, I, maybe that's a show topic. Maybe that's something we can discuss with David when he's here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, you know, I, to close this out, because I think we're getting toward the end. What, do you have guys have any predictions for 2024 that you'd like to share? Yeah, we're going to redo the stadium. We are going to do the stadium. Yeah. I, I, I think that's one of the things that I can't, that was one of the things that I came away with um, after uh, Dr. Bender of that. I think we're going to, yeah, I think we, I don't know that we're going to do all the collateral stuff at first. So that'd be my prediction that we won't, we won't end up doing all that collateral stuff. Yeah, I would hope they would break that up between break the two. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I think the thing that I walked away with and, and is that when people say, you know, it's, whether it's a billion or 800 or whatever it is. I think he said the next question though is, you know, would you do this so not to lose the Jaguars? And I think at that point, I, why people may grumble, I, they're not going to do that. I, I just, it's, it, we are still one of 32 cities in the United States. And I, I honestly believe that uh, one of my predictions, it won't be next year, but I really believe within the next five years, Jacksonville will, will, be, will either be in the Super Bowl 
or we will have a Super Bowl. Wow. I, I really believe that. Well, getting back to reality. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, I said it here. Go it's ahead right. and write it down. I, it's all right. I think, I think the Florida, I predict the Florida legislature is, is going to do more to take away local control in this next session. I mean, I, it, it's, just, it's just unbelievable. And, and I don't know what local elected officials can do about it um, at this point. I don't know how they do anything about it, but but uh, they're just doing more and more. And and uh, and, and finally, I, my last prediction is I think crime's going to continue to go up uh, no matter what the police cars look like, mm-hmm. uh, how much money they spend. And, and I don't know why we do anything about that either. The other uh, prediction I'll have um, is that uh, recreational marijuana will be passed next year. Yay. They will have that pass next year and we will be another state in that column of legalized pot. And the other one, years, uh, John Morgan, uh, all the years that John Morgan has been pushing. He can say, finally, finally, (laughs) finally, 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 after uh, me. And the other thing I would tell you is Christian Ziegler will not be the chair of the GOP in 2024. (laughs) God, I Unless know. he's doing it as a three-way with the Democrats and the uh, Independents. I'm, we're not going to go there. <laughs> this is, we're, trying to make this a, we're trying to make this a family show. No, not uh, today. You know, Mike, I, 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 I see your concern, and I think we should be concerned about losing control. But I think a lot of that is pushed by this governor. Oh, it is. And I, my prediction is that he is not going to be the nominee. He has pushed the legislature as far as he could push them. Uh, for re-election in this thing, but if he does not, if he does not is not successful in the upcoming one or two uh, uh, caucuses, Iowa or, or New Hampshire, right? I, I think he returns to Tallahassee a little more humble, and I think that you will see the legislature kind of rethink that they give him a, a rubber stamp. I really do. I was going to say, what does a lame duck DeSantis looks like look like? Because that's what he's going to be when well, he gets you know, there. He, it, it doesn't matter that he's a lame duck. They already those. You got members of that legislature that already have have, have their. They've already taken their cast of oil and they're ready to go now. You know. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 okay. Tell, I don't. Tell, I, tell I, Dean Black that. I. 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 My observation. Oh, my my observation. My observation is that I do not believe that Dean Black thought process or some of the things of he is pushing is part of the majority thinking of the Republican. I hope you're right. I I, I don't believe it. I really don't. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, Happy holidays to you and to your families. The other thing I was going to ask you at the beginning, and I found going back to the initial question we had here, when I approached you two to do this, did you go back to Sue and did you go back to Annette and say, Miller came up with the dumbest idea. What do you think? No. Okay. Just wondered. I just thought that. I didn't ask anybody. <laughs> oh, I, I started to, but then Sue would say, I thought you were trying to hang out with better people. And, you know, and, you know, but it's it's been this way for 58 years. And, you know, oh, she gosh. just would have thrown up her hands and go, it's a lost cause. It's an absolute <laughs> lost cause, you know. Just make sure you don't talk about us. There's a windmill just goes <laughs> walking towards it, right? Just change the last name. All right. Good. Everybody, thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys all. so very much. And thank, thank you, you all. Us. Don't forget for the next two weeks, we'll be rerunning two shows that we have done before. Uh, and we hope that you'll be in tune for that. Nat Glover will be on next week as we repeat the first show that he did with us. And in the second week, it's going to be Adam Chaskin and uh, Eric Mann from Together Against Hate. And you'll hear that show once again. Our thanks, by the way, to the Jas- Jacksonville yes, History Center and the Jacksonville Historical Society. Alan Bliss, when are you going to come on the show? We want to talk to you about the center. Uh, we hope to get that in the next month or two and with that have a very safe holiday and we'll see you again and happy new year happy new year see you 2024 mike's on mike with mike hightower mike tolber and mike miller can be found at your favorite podcasting platform facebook and youtube learn more at mikesonmike.com join us next time for more conversations with mike's on mike